Hello again. Tonight we're going to talk about the uh, Night Sky Network or the NASA JPL ASP Night Sky Network. Um, Broward Astronomy is looking to join NSN uh, come middle or so of next month. Um, already applied for membership and they said everything is good except you haven't been around for two years and NASA JPL requires you to be around for two years. So Middle of May will be around for two years. So I said, come back then. Just let me know and you'll probably be okay. Okay. Well, we're going to do that. But for those people that are either uh, somewhat familiar or have never heard of it, uh, we'll do a little discussion of Night Sky Network. So Night Sky Network, or if you, you know, spell out the food chain of all the different organizations, it's NASA JPL plus ASP Night Sky Network. And the uh, acronyms there are, of course, the uh, U.S. DOD's National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, which you'll notice that originally when Night Sky Network was formed, they got to use the NASA meatball a lot. Nowadays, it's just Night Sky Network with no NASA meatball because NASA uh, has gotten very strict regarding the copyright intellectual property ownership of NASA logos. Anyway, uh, so NASA, we've got that covered. Um, JPL is the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. These are the people that came up with the uh, rocket engine science for NASA's rockets back in the day. They're out in California at the California Institute of Technology. So they're kind of university affiliated. If you want to create new rocket technology, you've got to have all the university students that are going to become up and coming rocket scientists to uh, fill in your staff positions for you know the people you need to do the trench work while the people that have the uh, tenure can think up new things. So that's where you get the connection with the uh, JPL and California Institute of Technology. Astronomical Society of the Pacific, um, ASP is a group of amateur astronomers that uh, do public presentations and demonstrations and observing sessions in California. They're a multiple thousand member organization. So NASA and JPL said, hey, um, we're gonna come up with this thing called Night Sky Network and why don't you administer it for us? ASP uh, are the people that are actually doing the trench work to create the kits, maintain the kits, uh, put up the website, um, you know, manage Night Sky Network membership, those kinds of things. So that's kind of the food chain of NSN. Uh, here's Helen's and my connection to it. Um, when I was with SFAAA, um, we were a recognized uh, and promoted participating member of Night Sky Network. We had a banner in, in the building, and occasionally they would uh, send us a new banner. We take down the old one, which Original one had a NASA logo on it. Current one doesn't. Um, and we'd hang the new banner because, you know, the, the vinyl only lasts for so long and then it will rot and get dirty. And you, know, you want to throw that one away and use the new one, which is nice and pretty and colorful and shiny. So we, we did, um, the presentations, uh, for educational purposes in the building using the kits and Night Sky Network produces these educational kits. It's actually the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. They're a membership leadership team that creates the kits. And then they use the funding from NASA JPL to afford to send them to groups that get approved for membership. So we'll get an initial kit. I don't know what the kit content's gonna be, but we'll get an initial kit once they approve our membership. And then we do uh, an educational session, be it a live one or an online one, using the educational content. And that we go in and you know log the fact that we've done that, and if we do that three times a year, they'll continue to give us kits. And I found out that if you do it more than five times a year, you'll probably be the um, most noteworthy astronomy group in your state if you're Florida. And SFAA won that one year. And I said, how is it that our piddling little Fox Observatory actually was the most prolific presenter of Night Sky Network content? And it was because... We did five events in one year. Cool. <laughs> so we accepted their award, which was just a certificate kind of thing.
Uh, but they did put it on their website that, you know, we were the lead in Florida. Wow. So I look okay. forward to us doing the same thing. The hardship will be um, we do things online, not face to face. So it's much more difficult once we open things to the public to say, okay, how many of you were of what gender, what nationality, uh, and what age? Uh, this is the great unwashed public we're going to be allowing to listen to what we're doing. And therefore, it's going to be difficult to do that. We can get a head count. And from names, we might be able to guess gender, but age and who else is sitting there in the background in the room listening in? Having to clue. So this may be new things that Night Sky Network has to deal with um, post pandemic, because during the pandemic, it was kind of things put on hiatus. But they took note of the fact that some groups weren't so much hiatusing. Um, the uh, International Astronomical Union has a subsection called Communicating Astronomy with the Public, or CAP. And Helen and I both receive announcements from CAP periodically as to new ways to communicate astronomy and amateur astronomy to general members of the public. How to do it, you know, materials to do it, that kind of stuff. They put out a nifty calendar every year, too. But uh, anyway, so we didn't know they were out there watching us. But since we were posting our videos on YouTube and on Facebook, uh, Astronomical Society of the Pacific was watching us. And um, they actually referred to what we did on Saturday nights as, because it took a couple hours to watch it, a mega show. So uh, they, did a uh -huh. they did a presentation um, by way of um, Night Sky Network, Astronomical Society of the Pacific, to the uh, plenary in 2021 of the International Astronomical Union's subsection on public uh, communication of astronomy, TAP. So we were watching it. We didn't know we were going to be a part of it. And all of a sudden, like, hey, 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 I know those guys. Um, hey, Monroe, by right. the way, they are on the picture, too. Can you see the little window on the side? Every one of you are yeah. there. Oh, Can yeah. you see it? The, the little pictures of people there? Yeah. So you guys are in that picture, too. Somewhere. <laughs> That's because Helen was doing a Facebook video of me connected to the Zoom session and the little tiles along the side of the window. If you zoom it up a lot, you can actually see people. Some of the folks that are here tonight. Yep, uh, you could see the observatory. You could see the Night Sky Network posters on the wall. Uh, actually, not on the wall. Magnetically attached to the metal cabinets. Um, and on the table, you can see the uh, uh, planet model, the solar system planet model that Helen put together that was loosely based upon their kit with improvements. Um, so they, they thought it was really great what we were doing, and they promoted it to the, oh, my God, they're promoting it internationally to the International Astronomical Union as during the pandemic, this is how one group is not only sustaining their membership, actually growing their membership. Like, okay. So uh, Very cool. They did uh, multiple YouTube sessions. So if you just look at IAU CAP 2021, you'll see probably eight to ten video presentations, and uh, only one of them are we in, and you have to go 260 seconds in from the beginning to see, like, there we are, and we're there for roughly 10 seconds, and then they're on to a different topic. Uh -huh. But but they didn't ask us in advance, but because it was on YouTube and Facebook, they really didn't have to. Yeah, but those pictures, if it's four like that side by side, it's me. It's the pictures on NASA Night Sky Network that I instead to post two pictures. I normally post eight pictures of mm -hmm. the night because I meant to gather four pictures. Don't you remember that I used to do that? I recognize those pictures because those are the one that I posted on NASA Night Sky Network to yeah. my 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 uh, uh, my relatory. How yeah. how you call it? Regulatory. Uh, when, uh... If you're a member of NASA Night Sky Network and you want to keep getting kits, you have to do some kind of presentation based upon the materials. It doesn't have to be exact. It can be loosely associated. But you do the event. You record who watched you do the event. You log that on the Night Sky Network website. And um, 
when you do that, you can include pictures. So Helen would take pictures from the Facebook page and post them onto the Night Sky Network log entry. And so that's, I guess, where they started. So what, what kind of benefits do you get for uh, Broward Astronomy joining Night Sky Network? Well, obviously, we get the educational kits. And if we log our events, we get more kits. Um, you can go to the Night Sky Network website and find all sorts of uh, educational resources, um, uh, basically how to produce things for public consumption by an astronomy group, um, you know, process education stuff for the people that administer um, astronomy groups. The Marshall Space Flight Center of NASA um, actually maintains all of the collateral, the giveaway stuff, the freebies, the pictures that, that, that you see at table events. Um, they give those out as part of their STEM budget. Should say STEAM, but NASA says STEM. Um, anyway, it's part of their uh, STEM budget to create those materials. So when you have a new mission coming out, like um, uh, not Juicy because that was uh, ESA, but um, Juno, for example, the current Juno mission has giveaway collateral. Not as much as they used to because NASA's budget's been cut back. But um, if you're a part of NASA Night Sky Network, you can um, connect to uh, Marshall Space Flight Center and get them to send you like 50 lovely hard card um, color printed um, photographs of things. And then you can give those out as part of your educational event when you're doing things face to face. But you also get notoriety amongst your peers because if your astronomy group is part of NASA Night Sky Network and the other groups is as well, then you both get to reach out to one another if you want to. So you can do collaborative things. Plus, you get uh, for individual members of your own groups, you get uh, peer rec you get member recognition. So there is a certificate they put out annually that you can you know, enter your name here, enter your club name here, uh, and print them out uh, on sheets that you can pre-print or buy. Um, and uh, you get that. Plus, they have these nifty annual lapel pins, little push pin, little tie tack pins kind of things. Um, this is the one for 2022, which had the James Webb Space Telescope on it. Oh, nice. So they're made out of metal. It's a, Do you have or, yours nearby? Uh, I have an entire necklace that has these things all over it from my long-standing years of uh, SFAA, plus all the various events I went to, plus people going, I think you'll like this, giving me gifts as pins. So I've, I don't know, I've got 40 of these things on there. And then I bought some myself from the uh, NASA store at the Cape and pinned them on. But also you get public promotion. Uh, if you have an event coming up, if let's say we find a way to get the insurance, the liability insurance issue mitigated, and we want to do a public event, we can actually advertise the public event on the Night Sky Network site. You can also advertise it on Sky and Telescope for free. Uh, but if you're a Night Sky Network member, you're entitled to put the event online for that. I don't know if we'll get it initially or after we um, you know, do a couple of events. But like I said, you get a nifty vinyl banner to hang either at your observatory or at your observing event that, that you do. So, you know, this fall, if we wind up doing um, Big Cypress, we could carry it with us to Big Cypress and magnetically attach it to the side of my vehicle or something, which Mom, we have done in the past. Um, uh, Lee called me today. And he asked me to play something. So I'm going to use the uh, Supernova banner as a projection and do a comment with their recipe. So basically, we can take pictures and log that one later. Uh, I don't know if we could log them before we're actually a member. I mean, obviously, you can put them on YouTube and on Facebook. <laughs> but I don't know that we'll be able to log them as a Night Sky Network event if we're not a member yet. But uh, hey, yes, record we can, it anyway. We can use the material. Record it anyway. I, th I think we both still have logins for SFAA, but if we logged in 
and recorded it now, they'd get the credit for it instead of Broward Astronomy. But uh, like I said, you get uh, participating member event promotion on their site. For those of you that are not familiar with it, uh, they do have a lot of uh, NASA flying to various places and having uh, research habitats. I don't know why they get the money to do this, but they uh, create a lot of posters. They're very, very colorful, lovely posters like shoreline waterfront on uh, on a moon of Jupiter. Um, one of these moons is supposedly has an ocean underneath. So they show this lovely picture of people sitting on the shoreline watching the ocean on a moon of Jupiter. Like, well, there's there's fiction for you, but you can get those posters. And if you know how to print them, you can actually download the raw full resolution mega multi megapixel poster and then go to your local you know, office depot or wherever and have them printed for you in color or you can buy the poster. So membership management. This was something Helen reminded me of that uh, NASA Night Sky Network can actually do um, membership management for the members of your organization. So you can um, get the email address and name of all your astronomy groups members and load them up on your account on the Night Sky Network. And then if you want to send out email to all of your members, um, you can do that through Night Sky Network. My concern is I'm not sure everyone would want, you know, the food chain of um, NASA, JPL, Astronomical Society of the Pacific, and whoever else to have their you know, email address for free communication. And I'm not sure that everyone would want every um, dissemination that we put out for whatever reason uh, filtering through the Night Sky Network site because you don't know what they're going to do with it. Obviously, they're going to claim they only do it for Night Sky Network business purposes. But so I'll, I'll continue to do our own uh, membership management. And I don't have the funds to uh, do a member planet kind of farming it out and outsourcing it thing, which I'm an old hat at working Microsoft Office. Uh, so having an email list in Excel that I can then do a mail merge to produce email through Word, that's a piece of cake. I don't even do that. I do the email in Outlook, and then I keep the mailing list in Excel, and then I just copy and paste the email preferred address uh, area in the spreadsheet and paste it into the blind carbon copy field of the email. Uh, when I hit tab, it cleans it all up, and then I just send, and it seems to work. Yeah. So we'll stick with what we got. But I'm not going to use the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't mess with it. I'm going to use the phrase, this works for us. If we need to change it, we can change it. But right now it works for us. Okay. And this was something that uh, Helen endured more so than I did, but I got to witness it. Um, the Night Sky Network website is actually managed by the IT folks of Astronomical Society of the Pacific, not by NASA. Um, when you go to enter a lot of event entry data, like pictures and large areas of text and lists of uh, you know demographics of people that attended the event. Uh, if you try and do too much of that at one time, it overloads the interface and it can hang on you because it opens a lot of windows and you don't know which window is the current window. So it can get very confusing and the website hang on you. So you just basically blast your way out of the website, log back in again and try and re-enter it. Uh, to the point where um, I have seen, if you have a lot of data to enter, enter it into a notepad file and then just copy and paste to the website and then do an approve to store it. That, you know, if the website goes down, you didn't lose any data. You don't have to type anything in again. So I, I don't think yes, that's sort of I'll hassle. I'll be crying many times. Yes, I, I don't think that kind of hassle is something we want to deal with administratively. So uh, we'll, we'll go the write it down in a local office document first and then just copy, paste, copy, paste, send. And gather all your pictures together. Maybe it's better now. It's been so long. Yes, it has been a number of years and they've gone through the pandemic. And uh, I, I don't know, I haven't logged into it recently because if I went to log into it today, I'm sure my username and password will still work for SFAA's membership. 
on Nice Guy Network because they've literally done nothing with it since you've left. Now, maybe uh, um, Les's granddaughter has gone in and done some things with it, but I don't know. But uh, it may be an issue next month when I go to file and say, hey, guys, at Astronomical Society of the Pacific, I would like to move my membership from SFAA to BA and see if they've ever encountered that before. I think they probably have, but anyway. Logging you events. can be part of multiple clubs. It's no issue. Well, I'd like to remove it from SFAA so they don't accidentally get any credit for any events we do. Um, they need to do their own thing. They need they need to pull their bootstraps up and get going again. Um, but it is a requirement if you want to be part of Night Sky Network and receive the kits on a regular basis to log events. And uh, you know, Helen's got a day job now, so... I'll see if I can't log the events initially. So for anybody that's curious, here's the, and this won't be a requirement. Uh, BA members would not be required to create an account on NSN because we're not going to be, we're going to be a member as an organization, but our individual members need not be a member of Night Sky Network, but they can certainly do so, and I would approve them as members of NSN. Uh, our email disseminations will still come by way of Outlook and blind carbon copy just to keep it closed. Um, our members will not be required to join Astronomical Society of the Pacific, even though they administer Night Sky Network. Uh, you don't have to be a member of ASP. But if, if you want to become a member of ASP, if you find what they do interesting, I don't have to give you any approval for that. You can just go join. Okay, the timeline for doing this stuff. Um, given that there are so many benefits, and there's no annual cost. Uh, yeah, it, it's yeah, we're going to do that. Um, the minimum membership was 15, and we achieved that last year. Not everybody joins us every Saturday night, but we have a couple of people that will occasionally join us, but typically just receive the email that I send out. Um, so we achieved the, the 15 last year, and that's not a problem. Uh, the minimum longevity of two years. May 11th of this year will be our second anniversary. And so anytime after May 11th, I can give them a tap on the shoulder and go, you remember that uh, request to join I sent in? And you said, all you got to do is just let me know when your anniversary comes up and we'll process your request. Because the same guy that processes the request is the same David Prosper that promoted us to the International Astronomical <laughs> Union. So he's, he's very aware. And when I mentioned that it was me by name and Helen by name. Oh, sure. But NASA is a stickler. You got to be there for two years. They want to, don't want any fly by night, start up and shut down organizations. We'll request it uh, late next month or early June. I think we'll be a shoe in as the saying goes. But the recurring homework is if we want to uh, request and receive educational kits, we have to file the events. Um, I'm already creating, obviously, weekly presentation content. The kits will become additional presentation source material, so I don't have to think as hard during the week. Um, we'll record the events on their site. Uh, obviously, the event date and time and duration. Um, the kit from which the materials were loosely sourced. Uh, the attendance headcount we can do, but some of the demographics that they need for their um, NASA social progress uh, statistics. We may not be able to give them if we go to public online sessions, but we'll see what they say. Well, and I normally, you don't have to answer all the questions. So I put a number, male, mm -hmm. female, and then age group. And if there is any teachers in it, that's all I did. Yeah. All the rest of the socioeconomical questions, I never answered. Well, we can certainly do the head count, and we can probably guess by name most of the gender. Um, but as to the age, if they're not talking to us because we've muted them. No, the age group, it's not like age specific. What they want to know if it's children or adult. I know. But we don't That's have any, we don't know how many children are sitting in the background in the family home and the parents are the ones that connected in, but there's two or three kids sitting there watching it as well. Or or if they are only watching on YouTube. Yeah. And no, I'm not planning on requiring everybody to turn their video on 
so I can do a visual headcount of gender and age. Anyway, like I said, Helen's got a full-time job now, so I'll initially be doing this. Computers and I work well together, so once I get the pattern of what needs to be done, it'd probably be um, much easier than editing post-productions of videos on YouTube. Far easier than that, because that literally, if I do a three-hour session, it takes six hours to edit the video, because you've got to watch the video from front to back to know what you need to take out, and then the actual editing, you know, cutting and splicing, even though it's digital, is another two to three times what the individual snippets are. So that's why it takes so long to do it. But these things are just almost statistical recording. Okay, so in conclusion, it was kind of a no-brainer for us to join, so we're going to do it. The benefits are outstanding. We get additional educational content. And as NASA wants to promote new missions, um, there'll be new educational content created by the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. Uh, for example, there's one on Juno. There was one on Perseverance. There was one on the James Webb Space Telescope. Um, so as NASA does new big money missions, they'll produce new educational content, which will be great. Uh, we'll get public promotion. We'll obviously have to be open to the public at that point. We'll get member recognition on their site. Um, might get a nifty banner to hang behind me. Uh, and uh, for those that are regulars, uh, I'll you know get printed certificates so you can show your friends. And um, I think they've cut down the number of pens. I remember one year um, we filed for 22 pens, and they actually sent us 22 pens. I don't think they give them out as freely as they used to. It's because uh, before they gave, like, if you put the name of the people, that you receive for free without requesting just for filing uh, events, you get yes. three pins. But then if you put the name of the people who are going to receive people who help to have specific hours to observing, uh, yep. then every, it, we receive like 20 if I file, like the times that I file for everyone who was helping. We have a lot of trainees the time that I was there. Then uh, we, we have a lot of uh, pins that we went for free. And then there was a year of the sequester that uh, you get three for free but you have to buy all the others. Yes. And I, I think that post pandemic, they've kept it at that same cheap rate. So that was our conclusions for tonight's presentation. There's the ever unpopular about, and there's your hyperlinks. Yeah. And there's the ever popular, thanks for watching. Uh -huh. and the contact information. Okay, anything else about tonight's presentation before I uh, stop sharing it? Yeah. No, I could comment is that it's very useful because of the material they have. They have highest resolution images that even if you know part of the NASA Night Sky Network, you can download those pictures and reproduce anywhere. And this is excellent for teachers. So if you guys know any teachers who need material for, uh, you know, presentations about science, about it doesn't need to be directly about astronomy. They explain a lot of things. So you can go on the activities banner. And then on the activity banner, the, that is like a little uh, widget, like a little question that you can put. And you can put whatever you want, like comets, planets, asteroids, galaxies, whatever question you make, and then it will show the videos of people uh, of people using the material. It will have the full uh, resolution of the images, and you can download. You can learn how to present. You can have ideas, and then if you look through the 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 area that you see that is even like suggestions for a uh, uh, class plan. Like, uh, so it's it's really good, useful resource for teachers. So this is really awesome, you know, that we are going to be part of NASA Night Sky Network. And it is awesome to use as a teacher. And uh, something that Helen and I did 
at Fox Observatory that I guess it was a bridge too far for some. Um, we took the NASA Night Sky Network vinyl banner um, images, and I rescaled them to fit our 70-inch 4K TV at high resolution. And then I hooked them into Alexa so we could literally call up the pictures we used on a regular basis for educational ad hoc sessions onto the display. So you would give it a lead in and say, Lives of Stars, and it would bring up the poster, the giant vinyl poster for Lives of Stars on the 70-inch 4K display. That was way too technical. <laughs> uh, you know, what's the old saying? Any technology sufficiently advanced is indistinguishable from magic, and some people do <laughs> magic. So, anyway. But we don't have those uh, barriers for broad astronomy. It's like if it's something we can use to assist us in promoting astronomical education, science education, STEM or STEAM to the general public, um, we're going to head in that direction because the light's better. Okay, now I'll stop sharing. You know, it's not even 11 o'clock yet. I knew this presentation was going to be short and fast because most people – are aware of Night Sky Network, but I thought I'd get a presentation under our belt. So when I eventually pop this thing out to YouTube, that uh, maybe Night Sky Network will go. It's not a kit, but it's like the front, the the foreshadowing of kits. So putting that out on YouTube could count as a kit. <laughs> Is there anything else before we stop recording? Hearing nothing. Crickets.